Well, so here's kind of a historical view that I take about it, and I'm not, you know, an expert on geopolitics or anything like that. But basically, I see that our whole civilization depends or is built on, I call it a story of separation that takes a lot of forms. For example, uh, humans versus nature, uh, self versus other, us versus them, and so on. So as long as we had an enemy in the form okay, now he's distracted. As long as we had an enemy in the form of the Soviet Union, uh, we had uh, a foil, this evil entity, we thought, whereby we could define ourselves as good. And we, had, we could live on, on a war footing. When the Soviet Union dissolved, there was like this moment of, of kind of cultural panic where we were desperate, desperately looking for a new bad guy. And you might remember in the maybe early 90s, the new bad guy was for a brief moment, the Colombian drug lords, woo. And that was kind of portrayed even in some films as being like this really scary next foe of the good, the true and the beautiful. But that didn't work very well. And so there was this crisis because how do you maintain the military industrial complex and all that goes along with it if there isn't a convincing enemy? So just in the nick of time, global terror came along, and here was finally something that we could be afraid of again. But, you know, even at, even at the height of the hysteria following 9-11 that gave birth to the uh, second phase of the Iraq war, I got this sense that people weren't actually that afraid of terrorism. Nothing like the deep dread of the Soviet Union that prevailed in my childhood. People weren't, weren't actually that afraid of it. And so the fear and the hysteria had to be kind of manufactured, much more than in the days of the Cold War. And people just kind of went along with it. it but I think that it wasn't so much that the populace was clamoring for war as it was that the policy establishment and the elites were allowed to kind of go and do their thing without huge public buy-in. There was public opposition and there was even more just kind of public apathy. I remember when there was the terror alert system, green, amber, red, like nobody, nobody cared what the color was, you know, and, and the airport security, it just kind of becomes this ritual. So I feel like the Iraq war was kind of like this attempt to give a new lease on life, or, or it's kind of the war mentality on life support, extending it a few more years or decades beyond its time. Because really, the paradigm of war, like the fundamental paradigm of defeating your enemy through overwhelming force, that, properly speaking, ended in 1945, when, for the first time in human history, we developed a weapon too terrible to use. Today, nobody dreams of obliterating Russia or China or anybody through nuclear weapons. I mean, well, maybe not nobody. There are certain unregenerate elements that still entertain those fantasies. But uh, seriously, like that's not an option anymore. And that's different than it's been for thousands of years. For thousands of years, we've been able to at least pretend that our problems could be solved with final defeat of the enemy. So. Iraq, one of the things that, I mean, I guess I'm, I always look for silver linings. It's pretty hard to ignore the fact that none of the um, stated objectives were really achieved and nobody's better off. And, and it's just like this new confirmation that what we do to the other, we do to ourselves. And if we're talking about lies here, uh, like the biggest lie of all is that we can escape the consequences of what we do to the other. We can escape the consequences of what we do to black people, to poor people, to the forests, you know, to the oceans, to the rivers, to the mountains. If we build a big enough wall and a, a, a secure enough bubble, then we can escape what we've done to the other. But that doesn't work, you know? Like we have, yeah, like America has insulated itself from foreign violence, more or less but we have 
unprecedented levels of domestic violence. There's like this mirroring that goes on. We've um, seemingly insulated ourselves from the poisoning of the planet, yet we're in the midst of a terrible health crisis where life expectancy is lower for the new generation than it was for my generation. What we do to the other comes back to us. That's the, the deepest lie is that we can avoid that somehow. And I think that the, the, the big revolution that's, that's going on on this planet is to understand that we're all in this together. Therefore, war is utterly obsolete. 